So welcome back to some more Grand Theft Auto Liberty City stories. In this part, we will be completing the car and bike salesman activities, which are requirements to complete in order to get your percentage points 100%. And we will begin here with the car salesman, which is located in Harwood in Portland. And uh, the way that this activity works is that you need to complete a minimum of six levels of this activity to get your percentage points. Now, uh, you can go past that initial six level mark if you want. Maybe this is the type of thing that turns your pants into shorts or something to that effect. But um, I'm definitely not one of those people. Although, I suppose the appeal of making extra money when you go past that sixth level mark um, is kind of cool, you know, you can make some extra cash money, uh, holla dolla and all that stuff, so, I don't know, I mean, it's just not for me, because when you combine doing this, and even this on its own, but, um, I guess in my case, when you combine doing this with also doing the bike salesman after this, I mean, it's just a grind, like, I just... <laughs> You know, I just want to be done with it, like, after the first few levels of doing it. I mean, it's fun at first, because you're doing different things that you wouldn't normally be doing, like impressing people with your driving and all that. But, eh, I don't know, it's just, it's not for me. But, you know, it's on the table there, it's an option if you are interested in doing such things. But, anyways, besides the minimum level requirements for this activity, um, the way that the levels work is that you're going to have four cars that need, be, that need to be sold to four different customers, and these customers will have the same wants and will be located in the same position each and every single level. So this first customer that we're doing um, wants us to use this Esperanto in a very aggressive manner, so basically by running over pedestrians that we see on the sidewalks and also by evading the police. Uh, but this person, or this type of person, will be located in the same exact position for each and every single level. So I just want to hammer that point home. But um, thankfully, the two desires of this person uh, kind of go hand in hand because you can plot out a route from the car lot to the pay and spray and just run over pedestrians as you work your way on over to the pay and spray. And then by the time you arrive there, you'll likely have a wanted level. So you can just enter the pay and spray, get the car sprayed, lose your wanted level, and get that last little bump up in your sales meter to complete the sale. So um, that's quite nice there, that even though you do have to venture out a little bit, um, it's a pretty easy task at the end of the day. But uh, besides that first person, we have this second person now who wants us to use this car in a very fast manner by achieving top speeds and slowing down as little as possible. So um, it's a fun little task, I think, uh, what we have going on here. Um, but it's best to avoid the roads because this customer in particular, as well as the next one that we're going to do, want these cars that, that are being sold to them in the most pristine condition that you can possibly have these cars in. So basically, if you crash or even just barely scrape the edge of something, they'll want the car to be resprayed, and then you'll have to go out and get the car resprayed. So um, that's annoying when that happens, and you know, it's especially annoying when you know you do a pretty damn good job of driving around and keeping the vehicle in good condition, but then once their sale meter gets bumped up all the way, they say something like, I don't like this car's color, and then you'll have to get the car resprayed. So, yeah, that's annoying because it's like, eh, you know, you can do it on your own time, man. You know, I'm, I'm doing a damn good job here. But, you know, either way, you get the idea. You know, sometimes that pops up, but thankfully not too often. But um, either way, this next customer wants you to use the car, which I like in this case. It's like this hot pink perennial. Um, but um, this person wants you to use the car in a very slow manner. You know, kind of like you're cruising down the road. And, you know, I guess like... 15 miles per hour or something. I mean, it's just, it's insane at how slow you need to go, but it's not like a snail's pace. I know I was kind of going really, really slow at first, but um, it's a little bit above, like, I suppose just tapping the acceleration button gets the job done instead of continually holding it down as you would when you normally drive around. So, I don't know, you kind of got to play around with the taps and all that, but overall, it's not too bad. Now, this, this customer right here, this... This is where the uh, frustration kind of kicks in, especially when it starts raining and all that. Um, because this customer in this position uh, wants you to use this vehicle, which in this case is a BF injection, which is quite cool, I think. But um, they want you to use it in a, I, I guess, off-road style. So you have to find a nice place to kind of drive around off-road, which this uh, little back area with these hills and all that, um, get the job done quite nicely. And you can even go onto the beach if you want to, but... I don't know, I prefer just kind of rolling around there, but it's kind of annoying because it's a bit finicky at times. 
as to what exactly bumps up that meter for the sail to go through. Um, I don't know, it just sometimes takes a bit longer than you would think. It's like, uh, you know, you might not even be changing up how you're driving up those hills, but just sometimes more than others, the meter goes up or down. So, I don't know, just playing around back there, though, at the end of the day, gets the job done. So, that's how I accomplish these people's wants and desires. So, um, once you reach level 7, you can just leave the lot area and be done with this business forever, or at least so it seems, because we still have the bike salesman to do, which works pretty much the same way. So the bike salesman is located here at the edge of Belle Villa Park in Staten Island, and uh, it's pretty much a mirror image of what we've seen earlier, because you have four different types of customers with four different types of vehicles parked next to them, and they want you to use those vehicles in a specific fashion in order for you to, I guess, please them enough for them to then want to buy those vehicles. So, uh, basically, instead of cars, you have bikes, if you couldn't tell by the name or the uh, visuals going on here. But, um, I mean, this first person, again, just wants you to use the uh, bike, in this case, in an aggressive fashion. So we're gonna use the pay and spray method of running people on over as we drive to the pay and spray. And then we'll get rid of our wanted level by using the pay and spray. So, there's really not a whole lot of differences going on here outside of using bikes instead of cars, but um, I suppose the main thing is that there's no level system going on here. Instead, what the objective is, is for you to sell 40 total bikes, and you're going to have 10 of each of the four different bikes to sell, so that's how it works uh, in an even fashion. So um, you can divvy that up however you want to. You know, you can sell all 10 of one bike at once and then move on to the next one and sell all 10 of those ones and then, you know, you get the idea. Or you can, you know, mix and match, sell two at a time, maybe one of that one, but then one of the other one at the end of the line there, and, you know, going back and forth and all that. You know, it's just however you want, as long as by the end of it, you sell 10 of each of the bikes and you'll have 40 total. So. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward thing, and I like the, I guess, option of having the uh, freedom there to choose whatever you want in whatever order you want to, uh, you know, compared to the car salesman, where you had to sell four different types of cars every level, and you had no option of repeating cars or anything like that, so, um, I don't know, I mean, it's, it doesn't really change a whole lot. Um, it's still a repetitive process and all that, but either way, you know, it's, I guess, kind of a nice thing. Um, but, you know, the strategy, though, remained the same with the first person. This one, um, you know, there's there's no real real great spot to go insanely fast without crashing. Um, yeah, I just find this road to be fine, because with a bike it's more maneuverable than inside of a car, so I don't really mind being on the road while going insanely fast um, for this customer to please, I guess, her in that case, you know, which sounds a bit dirty there, but, um, I, you know, I like this one a lot, the guy on the Faggio, or the customer, because it can also be a woman, and who knows, maybe this person is a woman, even though they look like a man, so, I mean, that's a thing these days, but, you know, either way, um, you're using the Faggio to drive as slowly as possible, and I, I like it because, you know, you can just make circles around this place, and apparently that's enough to satisfy the customer, so... It's just, you know, it's a really silly thing when you're thinking about this, like in a realistic fashion that you have someone just wanting you to drive them around in circles, and then, then after that they say, ooh, I'll, I'll take it, and then, then, you know, you make a sale. So, if only sales were that easy to make in real life, I mean, geez, you know, I think most people would probably turn to being a salesman if it worked like this. I mean, it seems like easy money going on here, but... <laughs> Anyways, uh, we've moved on to the fourth and final type of customer, which is this fine fella who wants you to use the Sanchez in an off-road fashion. And thankfully there's this stretch of land out across the street from the bike shop, which you can just drive back and forth on and maybe do a jump or two, a twirl of the cane and such, and uh, fill up the meter quite quickly by doing that. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty smooth process. Of selling, there's, of, of selling these bikes, there's just so many of them that you have to sell. So that's where the time-consuming aspect of this comes from. So overall, I'm just glad to be done with both of these activities. And now we can move on to the next activity in the next part, which will be see the sight before your flight. So until then, I will see you next time before your flight.